Big Boy Zongli is back in 1.5. We're going over the best ways to build this character because there's a new artifact set. There's been some weapons introduced since 1.3 that are good on him. So let's get right into it for you guys. Zongli is back. Yes, he is good enough to be thrown in pretty much any team. He's one of the best characters in Genshin Impact, period, because of his great attributes that he can roll into your party based on the patches of 1.3 and the updates to the Geo buff. You have this giant shield that gives you protection so you can throw him in like a Hutao team. You can throw him in pretty much any team. You can throw him in Geo teams. You can throw him in whatever it is because he does physical resist down in element resist down, bring some nice off DPS support CC and damage with planet befall. And also as the Dominus Lapidus to help make some crystallization shields there for you guys. Now we're not going to go over exactly why it's all so good, but do remind yourselves that geo shields were buffed 150% absorption against all elements as well. And this is going to be something very prominent, especially if you're using the new set, which we'll talk about shortly, because it's going to allow you to build him even more offensive support DPS than before. You're not going to need as much HP if you're using that new set. So let's talk about the weapon selections here. He's got a ton of good weapons. Obviously, the Staff of Homa is insane for him. It is hands down my best ease of use weapon for him. Gives you that crit damage. so You can focus on crit rate for your artifacts. It also gives you a little bit of HP. It's going to help your shields out a little bit of your damage as well. And just this is always going to be active. You're never going to really get down to the little HP bonus here. But if you just want to swap them in, you know, use his shield to drop the pillar, elemental burst, get out. That's good there as well for you. Now we are going to talk about four star weapons here. The other five star weapons are also very good. We have, you know, the primordial jade wind spear crit right here. The downside of this one, if you're picking between all the different five star spears, you want that attack percent up. You want that damage percent up for having max stats and you're playing him as a support character. You're going to have to swap him in, do some normal attack chains first and then put your shield down and then do your elemental burst to get the max value from this weapon. I know a lot of you guys don't like that. So that one is there as well as an option, though, if you're especially if you're struggling that crit, right? That might just be good enough for you there. Then obviously the Skyward Spine, not listed here. Energy recharge, faster elemental burst there. That weapon can give you all of the uh, elemental burst energy that you need with the energy recharge on that. So you don't need to get any in your artifacts whatsoever. But Zongli's elemental burst is relatively tame on the cost here, right? It only costs 40 energy in a 12 second cooldown. That's relatively easy to maintain there, all things said and done but what about four star weapons here four star weapons very strong stuff here if you're doing a physical damage dps zongli which we will slightly cover crescent pike hands down the one you want to go with there especially if you have a high refinement ranks on it but what about other weapons for the support type zonglis or the support damage zonglis if you have a lithic spear lithic spear is pretty good if you're running a high leeway member team this weapon often gets overlooked because you can't always build around it but if you do have a ton of leeway characters in your party and you have a couple of refinement ranks on this, or even if you don't, this weapon is really good and then becomes like super insane as well if you get that high refinement rank. Because if you have four leeway characters, and guess what? Zongli the man is from leeway. This weapon has a good base attack on it, 6%, and then it's going to get increased up there. So secondary percent attack on top of that. And then for every character in your party, even at refinement rank one, you get 7% attack in 3% crit rate. So even at refinement rank one, if you're in a full leeway party, that's going to give you 12% crit rate. That is going to be absolutely amazing there. If you get some refinement ranks on that too, you're going to really, really, really like this weapon because it's going to give you a ton of crit, a ton of attack, and you're going to be good to go there. Now, if you need some energy recharge here, Pavonius Lance, right, is a thing that you can go about using there. If you're really desperate for energy recharge, I would suggest that you try to, you know, use like a more DPS style, like Lithic Spear sort of weapon there. You also have access to the Deathmatch from the Battle Pass. Low base attack on it, but it does have a tremendous amount of crit rate, so you can focus on building up crit damage with your artifacts, with their subsets, and with the main stat artifact circlet with the crit damage. Now, another weapon here, if you're just building pure support Zongli, you don't care about how much damage that you have access to, the Black Tassel is always there because this can give you a significant amount of bonus HP. Uh, in comparison to any other weapon because HP percent is the main stat there for this weapon. And you're going to love that if you're building just straight up support Zongli. Easy, easy, easy access weapon for you. And you don't even need to have it at refinement rank 5. That increases the damage against slimes, which are... A, well, that, that's a thing. That's a thing that exists in Genshin. But not necessarily something that you really are judging the Black Tassel on. So always remember that that's a backup there for you guys as well. Now, well, what about artifacts? So Zongli... He's got the old artifacts and the way that you build him now is going to be a little bit different depending on what it is that you're doing with this character, right? He's very flexible and that means he's a little bit complicated to build and you're going to have to really 
figure out which way it is that you want to utilize him. So there's a couple of different sets here. We're going to be talking about the Archaic Petra set. We're going to be talking about the Noblest Oblige set. We're going to be also talking about the brand new set here that just came out. The big old tenacity of the Millith set. And I am going to be working on that real quick. Just got that one insta drop. I know. I know. How could that go bad? I'm not sure. Those are all good stats for Zhong Li. But first of all here, Archaic Petra set, two piece bonus exceptionally powerful because all the more reason geo damage comes from a lot of his damage so if you're not playing him physical dps which i know a lot of you guys aren't you're playing him that sub dps you want to buff up the elemental skill damage from his e and the elemental burst damage from his elemental burst so that 15 percent geo damage affects both of those things the four piece here is a little bit interesting because it's hard to use but it is a very powerful effect so when you generate uh you know a geo crystallization reaction if zongli picks that crystal up and say you did like a pyro attack and then you'd hit it with geo you're gonna make a pyro crystal well if you have a pyro character in your party you pick that crystal up that pyro character or all your pyro characters are gonna get 35 percent bonus damage for 10 seconds so this is another reason why he's very very flexible you can put him in physical teams you can put him in element teams you're growing a more uh self-sufficient and more damage oriented which is what we're about to get into as well so if you really want to buff up that limit burst damage what you do is you wear two pieces of archaic petra for that 15 percent geo damage right affects his e affects his q but then what you do is you run him right with some noblest oblige set as well you want two pieces of this one because this increases your elemental burst damage by 20 percent. so this is the most selfish build for him is two piece noblest two piece archaic petra and then that last off piece can be whatever your best rolled artifact is for him in that given situation because you're going to get 35% increased damage for your elemental burst there on that little bit of a modifier increase which can be very very nice for him now finally the last set here before we get into substat rolls because we're going to be talking about each of the different builds here and how this last set might be a little bit different but I know you guys want to hear about it this last set this last set is amazing this last set is so good it's not even funny for him especially for that support off dps build so let's talk about this one so it gives you 20 percent hp not the craziest thing in the world but you can get some slightly better barriers that is also going to increase you know your damage by a little bit because your skills do have that hp multiplier on them as well it's not the highest bonus in the world but it does exist and then the four piece here is extraordinarily strong so when an elemental skill hits an opponent this counts his pillar pulses that's why it's so good for him the attack of all nearby party members including zongli himself gets 20% attack and their shield strength is increased by 30% for three seconds. I know it is only three second duration. This effect can only be triggered once every 0.5 seconds. So what does that mean? It means that it's going to be kind of bad, right? No, 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 no. This effect can still be triggered even when the character who is using this artifact set is not on the field and it does not have the can't be stacked thing. So whether that's a bug or an intended feature, that's a different video for a different day, but his pillar pulses faster than once every three seconds, right? Right on the money. So he's going to be able to get in there. And as long as there's an enemy around his pillar, he doesn't even have to be your active character. He's going to be buffing up your entire team by 20% attack. So, right, this goes off. You swap in your official, you summon Oz, got that 20% attack buff ready to go there. Your Xing Cho, his elemental burst, if he's built for damage, good to go there. Your main carry is getting more damage. That's good to go there. He's doing more damage with the elemental burst good to go there it's an exciting 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 set the other thing that's very strong about this because not only is that attack percent bonus very good because the only other set that we've had to really give us 20 percent attack from a, uh, a, an effect is the noblest oblige set right which gives you 20 percent attack for 12 seconds but you have to use your elemental burst thankfully for zongli if you want to run him full four piece noblest you can do that as well because he does have a 12 second cooldown on his elemental burst you can have this up full time but what you can also have up full time is this set and don't sleep on shield strength 30%. This is where if you have this set on, you can kind of lower his HP by a little bit because shield strength is an incredibly, incredibly powerful stat to have in Genshin Impact. You can do crazy stuff, right, with Zhongli and then even like a squishiest type character like Hu Tao, where she's got some shield strength down from this set as well as the maybe a times two geo passive. Also remind yourselves that 150% effectiveness to all elements as well as physical damage because his shield's a geo shield these things start becoming incredibly incredibly powerful especially if you have like another character that has an off the map ability that they can continuously practice as well so your uptime is going to be hilariously high on that and you're going to have a lot of extra shield strength 30 percent goes a long 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 way to keeping your character super healthy and i'm really looking forward to getting the insanely insanely good well rolled version 
of that set. So in my opinion, if you're running him that off DPS support, you're definitely going to want to go for this ceremonial war plume, the tenacity of the Millith, right? Get get the flower, get the feather. Those are new. It's a new set. So it can be kind of easier to get okay pieces of the flower and the feather. You're probably going to use your best gobble, your best circlet, and then you're going to have, you know, this one as well. You're going to have to roll like an attack percent or HP percent. So talking about stats here, let's talk about the stats that you want on your Zong Lee. You can notice he's got 32,000 HP, 2100 attack, 895 defense. And then what do we have for their stats here? We're working on our artifacts. We need to get this crit rate up to 50%. And then we want to work on crit damage. Energy recharge is at flat 100%. And that's actually good enough to have your Zongli ready to go if you're running with another Geo Element character, specifically or an exception like Ningguang, Albedo. Those work extremely well there. We have sh uh, shield strength here as well. We have a bunch of Geo damage bonus, so 90%. So how do we get access to that? What are we looking for here? So flower, feather, Substats that you're looking for Zongli, you really are trying to just kind of get him to do damage. Attack percent, even if you have staff at Homa, is always going to give you more damage than HP percent will by a pretty significant margin, uh, even including right the HP percent bonus damage scaling on his different normal tech, elemental skill, and elemental burst, right? You have like one point something, one point something, and like 33%. Attack percent is going to definitely outscale them if you have those talents leveled up for sure. So we're looking for a crit rate, right? We want to hit that two to one ratio ideally or once you get the 50 55 is another rule of thumb that you can find never run a character i know i just showed you he's got some artifacts swapped around someone's wearing some of his stuff but uh never run a character that's like sub 50 percent crit right there because that's really kind of not ideal right aim for 50 crit rate 100 crit damage and we're going to be talking about the ways that you can get there and what it is that you're going to be wearing for your circlet very shortly so after that if you want to do more damage attack percent if you want to do a little bit less damage but you want to be that off pinky support big shield character instead of attack percent maybe try to get some hp percent subsets on him there and then a tiny bit of energy recharge if you're not running like a double geo team with him if you feel uh very very scared about not being able to keep his elemental burst up but it costs 40 energy guys it is not that hard to get up even with zero percent energy recharge so that's the flower the feather is the same thing crit trance up to 50 percent crit damage and then hp percent attack percent there now let's talk about the crit chance and crit damage when it relates to your circlet here. So your circlet can do a lot of different things. You can see he's got an HP percent circlet on right now. So this is going to be determined based on your other stat rolls, right? If you have a lot of HP percent, you're aiming for that HP percent roll, but you don't have that crit chance, you don't have that crit damage up. You're going to be using one of the crit chance or crit damages, especially if you're going for that DPS build. This is a support big shield Zongli that still wants to do some damage. You can still crit for like 100k elemental burst here. But if you don't have the same sort of rolls that we have right now, HP percent, right? We still have 40% crit rate and 162% crit damage. And someone stole some of his gear. Um, you can go for HP percent. If you don't have that 50% crit rate uh, and then at least 100, 120, 130% crit damage, then you're definitely going to want to look for a crit chance, crit damage roll here. And also this general rule of thumb. Sometimes you guys might have something that looks like this, right? You might have an HP percent circle that rolled 21% crit damage. We might have an HP percent circle that has 15 crit rate on it. That's still a really good piece of gear, uh, especially it's going to help you big shields. It's going to help your crit rate. So that's another rule of thumb there. So if you are at 20% crit rate, right? You haven't equipped a circle. You're like, I'm at 20% crit rate. Should I use a crit damage one? Should I use a crit chance one? Slap that crit chance one on there. Get up that 50% crit rate. If you're already at 50% crit rate, because you have, you know, crit rate substat 10%, crit rate substat 12%, crit rate substat 7 crit rate substat over here too, and you're already at like 50% crit rate without your goblet equipped at all, or I, excuse me, your circlet equipped at all. Get a little bit of crit rate on your crit damage main stat circlet, throw that crit damage main stat circlet on there and be good to go there. So this is like the all-rounder Zhongli build. And then the sundial is another unique thing for him. You're either going to be going to attack percent or you're going to be going HP percent. Either one of those two is fine. You want to do more damage, get that attack percent sands. You want to have bigger shields, get that HP percent sands there as well to get those big shields. And then last but not least, if you're running this sub DPS, you want the elemental burst damage, you want the elemental skill damage, definitely run a Geo Cup here. This is going to be amazing for you because all of his damage, his burst damage, and his pulses, those are all Geo. If you're running a physical damage Zongli, all of this stuff works the same way, except you're going to be running a physical damage cup here and then you can actually use 
the full retracing bull light set very strong for him on a physical dps zong lee or you can do the new fangled thing because you'll be running crusted pike and what you can do here is you can run two of the new bloodstain set coupled with the uh big boss new set here do i not have a feather of it Anyway, we'll get to that in a second. So you're gonna be running, if you're using Crescent Pike, two pieces of Bloodstained Chivalry for the 25% physical damage. And then you're gonna be running two pieces of the brand new set that I'm pretty sure I have one thing of somewhere. What does it look like? Here it is, there's a four piece version, but two pieces of the Pale Flame set for 25% physical damage as well. So this is gonna affect his normal attacks. It's gonna affect his charge attacks. It's gonna affect his plunging attacks. And most importantly, it's gonna affect that Crescent Pike proc damage. So if you have a high refinement rate Crescent Pike, definitely wear two piece a pale flame as well as two piece of the blood stain to help you out and if you do get four well rolled versions of the a pale flame set here it works the same way as the tenacity of the millith because it's whenever an elemental skill hits an opponent those pulses are going to hit opponents so you'll get 25 percent from the two piece for physical damage then you'll get nine percent attack on the first prot and then an additional nine percent attack on that second proc from your elemental skill right so you have 18 percent attack and then since you have two stacks you're at max stacks the two piece bonus goes from 25% physical up to 50% physical. So that's going to be something that's very wonderful for you guys out there who are running that physical DPS Zhongli build. But what about the stats for this last set, right? What if we're running the four piece of the tenacity of the Millith? So just like we talked about before, if you're running tenacity of the Millith, you're going to be like super, super tanky on your barriers, super, super tanky on your barriers, especially if you have any other additional shield strength from anything else, right? You have GL resonance bonus. You're maybe using one of the, the five-star geo shields that give you shield strength bonus. There's a lot of other stuff that gives shield strength bonus. And what you can do here running this set, because you're gonna have these buffs up full time, is if you want that supportive high shield damage only, kind of like what I'm running right now, I could put that uh, set on and I could just take this HP percent circle it off, right? And I could replace it with like a crit damage circle or a crit rate circle it to get that last little bit of crit rate or I could get an additional 40% crit damage. And if I did that and fix them up, I could have, you know, like a 50% crit rate, 200% crit damage. And my shields would still be nearly as strong, if not equally strong, because that 30% shield strength is incredibly, incredibly powerful. And that's going to be a big deal for Zhongli, right? You can have a shield strength for himself, shield strength for whoever is at your active character with that shield down. He's going to give himself 20% attack. He gets that 20% HP as well from that set. So that's going to be a big deal for him going into the future i think it's going to be by far if you're running anything but a physical dps only the set to go for because it is just so exceptionally powerful when it comes to buffing up your team in that manner so keep that one in mind as well so what set are you guys going to be using for 1.5 and zongli let me know down below in the comment section if you haven't subscribed yet now is a great time to do so go ahead and smash that subscribe button and make sure you hit the like because we have a good fun out here and then go follow the twitch channel this is always good fun. Now we have the more informative videos like this one, where I don't have a lot of time for hijinks. I really want to waste your guys' time because you're here for a certain reason, but we have other fun stuff to do as well. So check out the channel. I like you guys a lot. You seem like good fellows and good ladies out there and bring the order down on that button. Until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next one.